Hello, hello everyone. Today I will be featuring, well, a very standard and very old ship since people have been requesting, well, some of the more basic guides. Uh, and in this guide I will be mostly focusing on the importance of positioning. Pensacola is, as many of you know, an incredibly squishy cruiser. This is basically the cruiser people shoot at to get citadels. Even with the full stealth build, you can see the concealment only extends to 12.4 kilometers. And my positioning on the map, well, right now I'm sailing quite happily in the open. But later on, obviously, I will try to reposition much, much safer. In general, you want to play fairly safe in the early game. I'm already starting to angle, already starting to kite away. You don't want to overextend in cruisers. The less ships are available on the map the more powerful the cruiser is because there's less chance of crossfires, less ships that can spot you and more uh, opportunities for you to use terrain to your advantage. So being the first guy in as a cruiser is the f worst thing you can do. You should absolutely try to support your DDS. In this case, I wait until we spot something. In this case, the Kirov. I'm spotted in return, so I'm going to keep do doing the turn I am because I really need to basically angle away and disengage as fast as possible. The Ismail shoots, I cancel my turn and I turn back in. This is also important to keep in mind. Cruisers, especially vulnerable when broadside, if you realize that you can't make a turn in time, you have a fast enough rudder shift to be able to cancel that turn and angle against the incoming AP. Don't always fully commit to a turn. If you're spotted like I was before this turn has even started, there's probably a high chance that a battleship will try to take a quick free shot at your broadside. And if you see this happening, like I saw there, it's always better to cancel the turn, turn in and mitigate the damage and then go for the full turn away. Now I'm in a pretty ideal angling position in the sense that I'm capable of shooting the target that I want, the Kirov, but I'm heavily angled away from both the Ismail and the Koenig that could easily punish me. And in fact, even with killing him, I even managed to get undetected, which makes the position even better. I'm briefly spotted again, RPF is pointing. I'm actually having a 19-point build. This was one of those days where um, I played I played ever worse ships, um, trying to get a loss. Basically, we went through the Scharnhorst, Gneisa now, and York, and all of these, and we couldn't get a loss. So I moved on to the Pensacola, basically making the game more and more challenging until we could get a loss. Uh, my chat highly expected me to get a loss in this Pensacola game, but we'll see how it actually turns out. Note that I'm detected, I'm pinging on the minimap. Uh, the reasoning here, if you do have RPF, you're probably one of the few ships with the information, and I'm providing information for my teammate by letting them know where the DD is. At this tier, and especially on the Pensacola, RPF is obviously not really that valuable, because most of the time uh, you're so far away from the enemy to gain any big advantage. What is important to note on this flank though, uh, both the battleships are disengaging, the DD is already kiting away, I should not waste too much time on this flank anymore. If I can get shots off on the Gallant, I'll take them, but in general I cannot accomplish much here anymore. The Pensacola, like all heavy American AP cruisers, or just heavy cruisers, uh, have really good strong AP because of the improved pen angles, um, but the HE DPM isn't exactly going to win any prizes. And burning down something like an Ismail, which is especially resistant to fires, is gonna take a very long time. And more importantly, if I do want to chase the Ismail and the Koenig, if you look at the minimap, I'm going to have to push where my Shan Wei is right now, which will leave me very vulnerable, open in a crossfire, and just in a really poor position. So I'm just disengaging. Sometimes you gotta understand, if I wanna do damage on this flank, I have to position myself so poorly that it ultimately isn't even worth going for it. And this is one of those situations. Whereas on the north, we can see that there's a push coming in. They killed our DD, they got two DDs pushing. On that flank, I can accomplish something. On this flank, I'm more than likely to be shot to pieces trying to chase two ships that are already disengaging. So on this flank, the fight is basically won. RPF gives me, gives me some information of where the DD is, they ping. And that's, I agree exactly that where he is. I don't correct his ping because, well, RPF agrees. The Gallant disengaged apparently, or is just undetected. So we're gonna angle away and see if we can ambush someone else. Switching to AP. In the Pensacola, like all American heavy cruisers, or uh, you want to try to ambush cruisers. That's what you do the best. Your AP with that improved pen angle and with the great penetration can Citadel pretty much cruises anywhere across the map. And that's what you want to punish. 
Acasta pops up though, so with the expert loader, I instantly switch back to HE, pop Hydro because he's probably torping the battleship next to me and I want to give chase and I'm gonna see if I can hunt him down. He's smoking up, trying to get into cover. I note that I'm very careful about being shot. I'm keeping an eye out. Keeping an eye out on the October, is anyone shoot me? Priority target disappears, so no one is actually aiming at me right now. Hydra picks up the torpedoes, and I do manage to get undetected. The Pensacola, whereas the rudder shift might not be the tightest, when you slow down like I did, you saw just how tight the turning circle becomes, and that allows you to, if you react in time, to maneuver quite well. The game isn't going too well for us at this point though. Oh, he actually reverses out of the smoke. It was only a matter of time before my Hydra would catch him, and my HE finishes him off. Note that I'm detected and being focused by multiple ships. We instantly turn around, we're instantly disengaging. We're gonna try to take some shots on the Galissonier, but our priority as a cruiser, especially in the early game, is survival. So we're not gonna tunnel vision on a low HP kill, we're gonna focus on surviving the Ismail, surviving the incoming damage, and if we can deal damage while focusing on survival, that's a bonus. But, especially in the early game, that shouldn't be your goal. Your goal early on is to survive long enough to be useful. If you go gung-ho, trying to get that damage in, you're probably going to get yourself killed. Two fires, he damage cons. Hopefully I should be able to finish him off. I'm slowing down to make sure he can't get undetected and to make it easier for me to land the shells. The risk is, of course, that I become an easier target to shoot for the guys behind me. The Ismail is, however, gliding behind the island because I stopped. So, I am in this case only being shot at, well, by a really far away Bretagne and this Galicinier close by. I kill him, I'm still detected though. That tells me that the DD is here. Even with the RPF telling me, that would have been enough information for me to know that the DD is in fact close by. I get pretty unlucky, I damage on a fire trying to go dark, but the, uh, the last volley from that cruiser sets me on fire again. Still though, Hydra is on cooldown, there's a DD on this flank. They, is, they also have at least one battleship supporting them from the back. This is not a fight I can take. Note that I do want to ambush this lander, I do want to deal damage to him, but I can't push up through this open field of multiple ships shooting me while being detected by a cruiser. It's a poor choice, especially since I'm already down to 18k health. The Pensacola is a large ship, it's pretty easy to hit, it doesn't have too much armor. At this point I can get deleted quite easily. We did manage to secure two kills to give our team the lead back, but my team is actually kind of just yoling up the middle, which is kind of dangerous because they risk being crossfired very heavily. Still though, this is one of those situations you got to realize, no, I can't push up while being spotted. I'm pinging because I'm expecting the DD to actually push into our camp, take advantage of this, but it turns out the DD actually disengages. He wants nothing to do with this. This is good. This information means that I'm, instead of having to kite away and play safe, I can set up an ambush. Even with the poor concealment of the Pensacola, you can still set up ambushes as long as you utilize terrain correctly. In this case, we know Budioni is pushing up, and we got all this island cover to use to pick a fight with the Budioni. You want to try to force one versus ones, fights where it's only you versus the enemy without the enemy's teammates being able to aid, without them being able to influence the battle. And timing this quite well, we come around the corner, Budioni is still going nose in, we're holding fire, holding fire, he's turning, we do get spotted, but he's already committed to the turn, he does cancel it a bit, but we're still getting this one versus one with what we wanted. The Bretagne could shoot us, but his guns are actually pointed away right now, so we're gonna try to close the distance as fast as we can, maintaining angling in case the Bretagne decides to shoot us, and seeing if we can punish this Budioni, because we have a crossfire on him. He has the angle against the ships in my cap, and because he has the angle against them, we can put this heavy American AP to use and get this crossfire working. Ships are being traded both sides. This should be the finishing volley on the Budioni, and it is. With another Citadel, we finish off the kill. The game, looking pretty good at this point, but my team's positioning is still questionable because they're caught very much in the open. We've got another broadside on the Leander, these kind of situations, you want to utilize them. Um, I don't want to go around the island, I'd rather stay on the closer side, because if I go around the island, I generally dislike going around islands that entirely block your sight, or block your shells. Because the second you go behind an island that blocks your guns, 
well, you're kind of isolating yourself from the battle. Um, the enemy isn't zoning you out, you're willingly zoning yourself out of the battle. And that's something I try to avoid. Note that if they had any battleships in the north here, I'd be very hesitant about taking this path because um, it leaves you without any real cover and you can't really turn away until after you have gotten past the islands. So this kind of positioning is only possible as long as you have the option of disengaging and there's no immediate threats. If there are immediate threats, this is basically suicide. The game has developed further. Suddenly, we're once again behind on ships and behind on points. The, our New Mexico seems quite overextended. I'm trying to get some shots in on the Leander, but he's actually kind of constantly ducking, ducking and weaving, and I'm not getting those big punishing volleys I'm hoping for. The downside of the Pensacola is, of course, the fairly slow shell velocity on the AP. It hits hard, but the reload is long, and the shells are slow, and if you pay attention, you can kind of mitigate a lot of the incoming damage. It's also, of course, spotted from the moon, which makes life fairly easy to know where the shells are going to be coming from. I'm gonna see if I can go dark. That means get undetected, and the Leander does leave range, so I do manage to get undetected. My goal is still to get rid of this Leander, but I have to keep in mind that the October might focus me. So now what we're looking at very much is the, de de uh, the detected sign, letting us know if the battleship is actually going to target us or not. It doesn't show up, so I'm not afraid to basically... Uh, right now I'm going full broadside, but detected lets me know if I'm actually being aimed at, and so far I'm not. He's more focused, I assume, on the Genova, or maybe just helping with the battleship. Regardless, as long as that's a, ma that's a thing, I'll be able to get into island cover with, with all my health intact. We switch to HE, even though it's somewhat broadside, and we're close enough that we can consistently land shells on the October, which means that even with his fast acting damage con, we should be able to get some permanent fires on him. He damage cons the first fires. This is very common, especially uh, the Soviet BBs. They get used to being able to damage con and get away with it, but if you can follow it up with instant fires right after, you can still do a fair bit of fire damage to these ships. Note that I'm reversing. I want to use this island cover. We basically reached the end game, the late game. The majority of teams, uh, ships on both teams are dead, and this is where the cruisers kind of start shining because Cruisers are faster than battleships, so cruisers have an easier time of outmaneuvering the battleships. And thanks to the spotting provided by my team and all the island cover, we can continually harass this October while at the same time remaining entirely undetected. The October does damage con. I think the fires have run out. We did get some good damage on him, but he will be able to disengage from this fight. I'm trying to see if I can maybe get a fire on him. If I don't get a fire with this volley, we're probably going to have to switch targets. No, he turns out it misses. So this time we're going to focus the next threat. The ship that is pushing in, the Koenig. Note that at this point it's very important. Between every volley, I zoom out. You don't want to be tunnel visioned. Between every volley, I zoom out and I look at the minimap a lot. The goal here is to use this island this island chain in front of me as cover and use my maneuverability as a cruiser to remain undetected the entire time I'm shooting. It's very important to keep an eye on October. If the October turns left, then I have to stop shooting because I'll get detected otherwise. But you see the October is turning right, so I can actually accelerate and keep track of this Koenig and I can keep firing on him while at the same time remaining entirely undetected. At this point, the Gernig has triple fires on him, and it's a nice, fat bonfire. The Congo is overextending, though. He's gonna get crossfired. Koenig still had his damage con available. I will be able to kill the Koenig, but the problem is, because my Congo is overextended, he's probably gonna die in the process. There's the expected blaps, but we are able to do what a cruiser does best. Deal damage while being undetected. This is something that People don't often understand. This is the point you want to reach in a cruiser. It, when you get radars and stuff, the, your role obviously changes. But in these low to mid tiers, this is the most important thing you can be doing in a cruiser. This is why one of the most important values for a cruiser is DPM, damage per minute. You want to be able to maximize your ability to deal damage. And the more you can shoot, the more DPM you deal, the more effective you are in your role. 
And that's why they don't have any real armor. They have a huge citadel. But the damage they can pump out is actually quite good. It's not amazing. They get significantly better. Cruisers scale much better at high tiers. At mid tiers, they're kind of eh in general. In fact, if you look at ranked, something like tier 6 ranked, uh, it's pretty much dominated by battleships and destroyers. There's no cruisers because they really lack utility, they lack heal, they don't have enough damage to offset this. That doesn't mean that they can't absolutely be played effectively, as you can see here. Koenig is moving up, I have to move up as well to remain in cover while being able to deal damage. There does come a risk with this though. Um, I don't know what October is doing. This is the first time we're taking a risk between this entire island, and that's because we lack information, but we have to take the risk because we need to secure the skill, because, well, the game is very, very close, and we can't afford this guy to push around the corner and rush us. If he manages to rush us, we're basically dead. The risk does occur, though. The October had turned around. He had pushed close enough to actually get vision of me while I was shooting. I instantly turn around, try to avoid, and hope for the best. At this point, we actually get lucky. That was the first time I can say that was very fortunate um, because a Pensacola can easily have gotten devastated there. Even though it's only October, a tier 5 battleship, the problem with the Pensacola is the huge citadel and general lack of armor. We managed to position the island between us again though. The October is behind the island, the Koenig is behind the island, and we're going to continue using our superior maneuverability to avoid any future incoming shells. But even that sloppy haphazard volley dealt 8,000 damage. When you consider that you have 32k, that's a quarter of your health. And we got lucky. That gives you an idea of just how vulnerable this ship is in the open. Well, anyone who's played the Pensacola knows how vulnerable the ship is in the open. So, positioning in the Pensacola is probably one of the most important things when it comes to succeeding. There are some ships that make this so much harder. For example, a carrier in this game would have made life a ton more difficult. The carrier would have of course died since we've had ships in their spawn and so forth, but carriers especially make the early game incredibly hard for cruisers. Um, some people say that carriers are supposed to be the counter to DDs or battleships, but the ships that actually tend to suffer really the hardest tend to be cruisers, because especially in mid-tiers they rely so heavily on this concealment to stay alive because they don't really have any other tools. They don't have armor, they don't have heal. So, and they don't really have any stellar speed yet. So the only thing they have to survive with is concealment and the carrier kind of completely nullifies that, which is one of the reasons why, even though carriers might not be striking cruisers, uh, cru carrier games affect cruisers very, very heavily and make them so much more difficult. At this point, even though it looked fairly close and this game was quite a bit of a nail biter, uh, through basically just intelligent positioning, we have been able to do nothing but shoot, 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 and farm damage pretty much the last 5-10 minutes of this game. We have been nothing doing but nothing but shooting every reload. Sadly, the October turns out just as I'm about to secure my Kraken and gives full broadside to the enemy battleship. Obviously, he gets deleted and the game ends without my Kraken. Still though, 120k damage, um, Confederate, Arsonist, high caliber. All the damage rewards in a Pensacola is always satisfying. It wasn't any sort of super damage game, like you didn't see any huge AP devastating volleys or any insane numbers here. This was more of a very calm, calculated and collected game showing how you need to play a cruiser to get consistent results. There's plenty of games you can see where the cruiser Yola is in and honestly kind of gets lucky and gets huge damage or the enemy team just completely potatoes and you get lucky. But this game was more about using the only advantage cruisers at this tier have, and that's the advantage in maneuverability. That's why I generally hate when they add battleships um, to low mid tiers that are super fast, because it kind of offsets the one advantage cruisers have. And well, if you play tier six, tier seven, or well, tier, tier seven, you get smoke cruisers, but tier six ranked, I mean, cruisers tend to be kind of the XP pinatas for most most players. And it's much rougher to play something like a cruiser, even if you're a good player, if you don't have smoke, compared to a battleship. It's, or even a DD. It's just more comfortable. Team score-wise, 1.9k base. It's okay. 
nothing special once again. This game wasn't intended as being the most amazing results in terms of numbers. This was a game that showcased how important being in the right place is. Much more important than any amazing volley, much more important than any amazing aim or any mechanical skills. This game is fundamentally about positioning and this game was a good example of that particular thing. Detail score wise, uh, about the same HE and AP damage with some additional fires of course. The damage could have been of course better if we'd been fighting other battleships. Having to farm Ismiles and Octobers and such that can damage Kona load your fires will always offset your damage greatly. But ultimately I thought this was a good example of what to do and what not to do. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will talk to you guys later.